Previously on the Traveling Together Journal, we spent the entirety of our six-month tourist visa exploring the big, beautiful country of Mexico. From the Baja Peninsula, down the Pacific coast, up through the Central Mountains, and across to the Yucatan Peninsula and the Caribbean Sea. We got off the beaten track and took a look around the next bend. We found kind people, a unique culture, and delicious food. From subterranean waterways to snow-capped volcanoes, from the surf of the Pacific Ocean to the steam caves of Tolentongo, Mexico proved to be a land of diverse natural beauty, ripe for adventure, and layered with history. We had a couple of setbacks along the way, but overall we truly enjoyed Mexico and were a little sad to be leaving. But with only one day left on our visas, our time was up. So we prepared to cross the border to a much more expensive Belize. We got Jagger a fresh health certificate, filled our propane and gasoline tanks, stocked up on dry goods, and headed for the border. Ah, here we go! Turn it off on the exit! More police! Woohoo! Uh, we're not off to the smoothest start. Um, apparently there is an exit tax, or a tourist tax or something, to leave Mexico. And we thought we already paid it, and we very well could have but we don't have receipts saying we did, so we're gonna have to pay. Well, yeah, we got pretty ripped off. Uh, we definitely paid the tourist fee. Obviously, we wouldn't have had the little tourist cards if we didn't pay the fee, but you have to have a receipt, and we weren't given one because we didn't pay the fee through Ban Hercito, which is the only ones who give you a receipt. We've heard from other travelers of this obnoxious dilemma, so whatever, good on you, Mexico. You got an extra 40 bucks out of us. And so now our luck is that a bus of tourists just got dropped off as we want to like cancel our tourist visa. After repaying for and then canceling our tourist visas and canceling our temporary vehicle import permit at the immigration office and national bank, we drove across the frontera and onto Belizean soil, where our first stop was the vehicle fumigation station. Well, now we're at this awesome fumigation thing, which is mandatory, but there's no one here. And I'm pretty sure you're supposed to get like a little receipt that you went through it. So Matt's out there walking around trying to find somebody. All right, so a guy, there's a building up ahead. A guy came out and was like, okay, come through it, like from way over there. And then we go and pay. Not the most intuitive experience. So what did that run? That was five US dollars, or 10 Belize. From the fumigation station, we made our way over to the Belize Immigration Office, where we hoped to obtain tourist visas for us and a pet import permit for Jagger. We would have liked to share more of this exhilarating process of us standing in line and filling out forms, but the Belizean officials were very adamant about the no filming rules. So Matt and I are taking a break because we both have a delicious apple and we're going to eat it because you can't bring any produce or meat into Belize. And we didn't want to toss our apples. <sighs> so we got dinged in Mexico um, and then we got dinged here too. We, even though we looked up like how to bring the dog in, there's a specific permit and we didn't have that permit even though we had a letter from the vet saying everything that you're supposed to have on the permit. I guess it was just a misinterpretation about what we needed and so they, because we did have the paperwork though, we didn't have to do any quarantine with the dog or turn around. So it was good we did do that, uh, but we still got penaltied. So we had to pay for the permit and a pretty hefty penalty for not pre-applying for the permit. So. We got stuck behind that huge bus of people so even though the Belize border is like empty right now we waited like 45 minutes because we got stuck behind the bus of people eh, whatever you know it's gonna take a long day when you go to the border from the immigration office we drove through a kiosk to get our temporary vehicle import permit then through another kiosk to have the vehicle inspected the inspection consisted of a casual glance in the back of the truck and waving us along to our next stop the Belize Vehicle Insurance Office, where we could get our mandatory insurance coverage. 
Uh, so we got our insurance stuff sorted out for Belize. One month cost us 60 Belizean dollars, that's 30 US. And I got this little sticker we got to put up here on the windshield. And we're all set. Easy peasy. Woohoo, we're done! <laughs> With the last of our international border scavenger hunt items completed, we hit the road into Belize, just in time to beat an afternoon squall. Well, I'm feeling really grateful we're not like standing outside of immigration for 45 minutes in this weather. That's totally what we were doing 45 minutes ago. So this is the hand-cranked ferry going to take us over to the Copper Bank area. Pretty cool! Fortunately, the tropical rain left just as suddenly as it had arrived, and once again we avoided waiting in line in the rain. But the slippery mud it left behind made the loading ramp a little more interesting. Oh! <laughs> oh. We were cruising along pretty good on the ferry, but I figured I might as well offer a hand. And when Amy wanted to see how hard it was too, our captain figured we could do his job and he would do ours. So he took over the filming and started asking us questions. So how long you will be here in Belize? Uh, maybe a month. One month. Oh, okay, okay. And, and you will camp at Sartaneja? Yeah. Okay. I think we're gonna go to the island. San Pedro? San Pedro and Kikaka. Yeah. These guys were an absolute hoot, and they were giving us a great first impression of the laid back, friendly attitude we would continue to get from the people here in Belize. We just arrived at Copper Bank Inn. They are closed, but we met a guy at the ferry that said they'd hook us up with some camping anyways, and sure enough, they did. Looks like it's not high season. They don't have their pool going. <laughs> and it's pretty nice. We've got power. They said they'll open up a room for us to be able to shower. we got toilets around the corner. We've got internet. It's really awesome when they have power because it's a drive day as well as a border crossing day which meant that our truck was off and the fridge was on for a really long time. And we actually didn't do that much driving. It wasn't very far to the Belize border and then it wasn't very far to here. And it is cloudy right now. We would not pull in even enough juice to just like run the fridge right now. So Matt is just gonna hook up the fridge to the land power. Definitely one of our favorite features about our fridge is being able to switch from our 12 volt to regular power. We're gonna camp for a night or two. It's kind of a long day today, but everything went pretty well. And now we're at a pretty awesome camp spot. Jags is like in the grass, aren't you, Jags? <laughs> what do you think, buddy? What do you think, huh? Yeah, time for some belly rubs. <laughs> Next time on the Traveling Together Journal, 
We continue to explore Belize for excellent camp spots and adventure.